Hi and welcome back to the Sci-Fi Shed. Tonight we're going to take a look at Clifford Simak's Way Station. When this book first came out, it won the Hugo in 1964 for the best novel. So the story begins with this guy called Enoch Wallace who's come to the attention of the CIA. And the reason that is, is because the records suggest that Enoch is something like 140 years old. So the CIA has sort of taken interest and in trying to understand has there been an error in the record keeping or is this the original Enoch Wallace who's 140 years old which obviously warrants some further investigation. And what we find is that Enoch is indeed 140 years old, but doesn't look a day over 30. And the reason that is, is because he's a caretaker of these way stations, or at least one particular way station on Earth. And what these way stations are, and I must admit, I took a previous cut where I talked a little bit more about the way stations, but I thought, you know, doing so just takes away from really what is one of the highlights of this book for me at least is the understanding of how these way stations work and how they operate because i just think it's fantastically done but what they are without giving too much away they're a means of intergalactic faster than light travel but the way it's depicted in the book is something i'm not seeing in any other science fiction book um, and i think it's a really clever way and i think it's one of the highlights in the book so as a caretaker what we find is that enoch doesn't age that the only time he does age is when he goes for his daily walks but when he walks back into the way station which happens to be his home any signs of aging is, is reversed and he, he basically doesn't age and he's been living like this for like the last hundred years living you know in harmony is isolated he can't tell anyone what's happening at the way station but all of that is about to change at the beginning of the novel so it's a first contact alien novel um, and what we find is that there was this alien being called Ulysses at least that's what you not calls him Ulysses and you've if you read the book and you've seen a description of Ulysses You've got to comment down below and tell me if he doesn't just give you the splitting image of Stephen King's It. For me, every time I read, I think, oh man, this is spooky. This guy is really spooky. But unlike Stephen King's It, he's actually a pretty decent guy and um, a pro Earth, if you like. So it's the first Alien Contact novel. And they've asked Enoch to be the caretaker of these way stations, which serve as you know, means of intergalactic faster than light travel. And what we find is that, you know, he's been going through this for the last hundred years, having hundreds of visitors come through the, the way station, you know, learning from them, cataloging, you know, all sorts of wonderful technologies and concepts. And one of those concepts uh, that he's come across is this Miser, I think it was called the Miser Systems of Statistics. Don't hold me on that. It's something like that. Miser's system of statistics. And what this system does is it, it accurately determines whether or not, based on some input data, war is imminent on a particular planet. And Enoch has gone through a system of you know pumping data into this system and he's come to the conclusion that Earth is looking down a barrel of a gun, literally, quite literally speaking. Um, which is sort of interesting given when the book was written because it would have been it was released in 1963 which I suspect Clifford Simak must have been thinking about this book in the 60s you know 61 62 time frame which was sort of at the height of the Cold War particularly during the Cuban Missile Crisis so I suspect some of that you know anxiety and fear around you know a World War three sort of plays into the into the concept and to the fears that um, Enoch Wallace has in the book so he's plugged all these numbers in and he's unsure of himself he's not sure whether or not you know the system or what the data is fed into the system is, in, is incorrect whether or not his understanding is incorrect but he is concerned but what we find is that the universe and the, gal the galaxy at large is not so much you know war stricken or you know staring down a barrel of gun at war but fractions have started or fractures rather have started forming within the intergalactic worlds and not everything is in, in unity as it should be and what we find is that there's this talisman uh, which sort of you know it's an interesting sort of deviation in the book where it goes into this mystic sort of spiritualist sort of path which is sort of interesting and it's not overly bearing mind you 
but it takes this you know, there's this object called a talisman that works to be a mediator between you know a, medi a mediator a, a person and this um, galactic what was a spiritual spiritual force of the universe they called it um, and that that item has gone missing so there hasn't been a channeler for this talisman for centuries and the galaxy is starting to suffer for it. Yeah, so what we find is that the book begins when CIA start meddling into a grave that is on Enoch's property which unbeknownst to them is the grave of a um, an alien that died at the way station that Enoch buried alongside his parents and that sort of instigates some intergalactic politicking and fractions within the galaxy where they don't want Earth to participate so Enoch is going to make a choice he's got to make so many choices he's going to make a choice about whether or not he continues as a human with humanity and stays on the planet Earth and says goodbye to the intergalactic you know worlds and stops working at the way stations or but then there's an imminent threat of war and what does he do about that and the book really asked one question or yeah, I asked multiple questions but one of the questions I thought was brilliant was you know can one man play God when it comes to the whole human race because he's got a choice to make um, he can ask the alien races to interject but the response they provide is rather interesting and a rather interesting challenge and I won't give that away either so you'll have to read the book to see what his choices are but I thought it was brilliantly portrayed as well so look very good book Clifford Simax The Way Station First Contact I wouldn't say thriller there is an element of that in there so what I like about this book you know and who would I recommend it to you know for me this book I'd recommend to anyone who has a kid stared or even as an adult for that matter stared up at the skies at night looked up into the stars and wondered what was out there and if there was life on another planet what would it look like and Clifford Simak has done that I think just brilliantly because we have Enoch who was this wandering kid staring at the heavens and who's given an opportunity to meet thousands of human you know, of alien races of all shapes and forms and be able to catalog and communicate with them which I thought was just brilliant so if you're that little kid or a kid at heart who still looks up at the stars and wonders I think this will uh, quench your thirst a little I think it was brilliantly portrayed and this was also one of my go-to books you know if someone wants to get into science fiction and say what you know what would you recommend as a first good read to get into that science fiction genre I always highly recommend Clifford Simak as well for me this book I first read it 25 maybe 28 25 years ago and I've never forgotten it it's been always I, I never forget the concept of the way stations I just always think it's just pure science fiction for me it's what science fiction should be about I reread it about 10 years ago again and I felt just as excited just as wonderful about it and I just reread it now for this review and I've fallen in love with the book again it's one of my favorites and uh, but before we give too much away let's have a look at the sci-fi ladder and see where we will place this book hey and welcome to the sci-fi shed ladder and last time we looked at the left hand of darkness by Ursula Le Guin we didn't really need to make a, um, a decision at that point as it was the first in the series that we reviewed but it's got the H for Hugo and for Nebula winning book for 1970 the left hand of darkness Ursula Le Guin it was a very good book you know but today we've got to make a choice does Clifford Simax way station rank above or below the left hand of darkness Put your thoughts and comments down below. What do you think? Do you think it should be above or below? I've made my choice and I'm going to put it. And it was difficult. They're always difficult because they're all good books. But I'm going to put it above the left hand of darkness. And the main reason for me, really, the left hand of darkness talked to really one principal theme, which was great. And it's a beautifully written book. But for me, Way Station in Clifford Sarmac first contact alien novel just always hits a spot for me it's a beautifully written book and 
it won the Hugo in 1964. Nebula was not an award system back then, so it's hard to say whether or not it was also worthy of a Nebula. But for me, I would rank it above the left hand of darkness. I just love the concept of the way stations themselves. Yeah, let me know. Do you agree, disagree? And join me next time as we take a look at another classic Hugo and Nebula winning book and decide where it sits on our Hugo and Nebula winning sci-fi shed ladder. Thanks for taking part and um, hope to hear from you. Thank you. Like, subscribe and do all those wonderful things. And I'll see you next time on the sci-fi shed.